Alright, today with this video, I'm going to be fighting the living failures. I said before that I would um, <coughs> post uh, videos with my commentary of me, um, of me not beating bosses. And um, with this boss, I didn't feel like I had to because, like, yeah, I wanted to show like a reel of me, uh, like oh, a video of me being kick getting my ass kicked by like, uh, certain bosses. But this one, I didn't feel like I had to. This boss didn't deserve that type of thing because I don't think this boss is that difficult. It's pretty. It's it, it is an interesting boss. I do love the idea of this boss. It's like this boss is like a celestial emissary. Like you're just fighting the that one celestial emissary over again. I do like that about about this boss, but um, I don't think that it's that difficult to see what to do in this boss. Um, basically, it's just not don't get hit. They have slow moving attacks. Um, they have a slam. They have a head slam. They have a uh, they have a sweep. They have uh, another sweep. Like these are the melee attacks. Yeah, they have, they have a right sweep, then left sweep. And then, um, and then head slam. Yeah. They usually do a combo, and then they then they, there's a head slam, and then there's the two hand slam. Now with me, I'm using my Ludwig's uh, Holy Blade plus nine, and I'm just using the L two over and over because it actually staggers them and stops them from attacking. And when, in this boss fight, you want to target one of these living failures because they all contribute to one uh, health bar, but. Um, the thing to know about this boss is it's like the four kings if you play Dark Souls 2 where uh, the, no matter how many times you kill the um, how many times even if it says four kings like uh, at least this time they didn't say like you know four living failures or something like that or five living failures they it's it's just they will continually spawn no matter what so you got I got hit a couple times because you have to watch out for, and you have to watch out for the arcane attacks from um, the other living failure. There's usually one, two, maybe for me they like I've read somewhere where it's like uh, one will attack you and chase you and uh, one will uh, use arcane attacks. But really, it is it's it's more it's not it's not just it's not just one uh, living failure. There'd be two. I think I think usually on me there's two uh, living failures trying to melee me. And then um, one trying to uh, shoot stuff at me. Actually, I think two also. It's, it's pretty split up, but there's also there's always just one that's just following around doing nothing. Uh, I'm not even trying to use regain here because I'm being so careful. I've, I've I have like gotten myself killed by these boss this boss for a couple times, but it's not like stuff that to be very worried about. Really, you want to just dodge their slow moving attacks. As you can see, they're very slow. Um, dodge the magic guys, and they're gonna do. I think at half HP, they're gonna do one attack that's actually really interesting and uh, worth looking at. What you really want to do with this fight is um, watch, like keep you uh, keep locked on to one uh, living failure or one of these things, and um, yeah, so you can. Um, Okay. okay, this is the attack that I was talking about. Now, if you get um, behind the f yeah, like it'll there's a meteor shower just like like ROMs, but it will always come down from that side, and you can totally avoid it by getting behind that uh, that uh, flower tree. That's why they they do a lot of that in uh, Dark Souls, and I think uh, in uh, Bloodborne a lot more is they give you like a pillar or some sort of like uh, like some sort of box that you can't. Um, you, like you know, that'll split you up between um, them and you. Also, they do a the, when they do a two hand slam. Uh, even if you dodge into it, they might do like an arcane like blast release thing at the end of it, which seems like it hurts them. But I don't know because you know their health bars aren't showing up. And here, see, like you got to pay attention to that uh, meteor swarm that's about to come out. You can attack them while they're doing this. Actually, I think uh, I don't know if it happened on this one. But uh, what I noticed was, uh, I noticed is that if, if you kill one of the living failures while they're doing it, and another one appears while the meteor storm is still going, he will actually, uh, or they, whatever, will um, run towards you and attack you. Like, they're not part of that whole weird chant that they all, like, summon. 
And also, it's good to group them up too, because then you can get, you know, pretty much uh, clip both of them with your attacks. I think, oh, I think, I think you might see an example of uh, one of the living failures coming after me. I hope so. I don't know, I didn't review the clip, I just knew that this is the one that I won with. I didn't take a, I didn't take a clip of, uh, of me losing, because I, I, got, I, got, I got pretty frustrated with this uh, boss. Not frustrated, more like, more like I'm stupid, how can I die to this boss, it's so easy. It has, a, it has a big health bar, or maybe I'm just not doing enough damage. I've been considering, like, upgrading my, my, um, my, uh, strength and skill. Because uh, my strength, no, uh, I think my strength is 25. I think my skill needs to get up. It's 15. My arcane is, is 24. I think that's good, too. So I think 25, 25, 25 is fine. I am pretty much a glass cannon, though. I mean, I do have, it, the health bar is fine. It's just, like, it's not enough to take a whole bunch of hits. There's a place where I can farm, I found, in the, in the astral clock tower um, at the bottom where you can um, you get at least 10,000 to like uh, and above uh, souls each time or blood echoes each time you do it it what pissed me off about this boss is I'm, I'm about to beat it and um, I really should have done the blood echoes thing earlier like this one that one that one does have my blood echoes and um, that one does have my blood echoes, and if I killed it, then I would have got my blood echoes back. But then I realize, but if you don't kill that one specifically at the end of the boss fight, and um, it's just annoying. Just don't get the I don't get my blood echoes at the end. That's like thirty four thousand in there. Um, yeah, so their arcane attacks is that big shockwave bubble. bubble. If it um, it can go through them, it doesn't. Uh, it can clip, it can go through like certain things, but it goes in a straight line, so you can move away from it. But it does have a shockwave, and you need to be able to dodge out of it. Then they have the one where they raise uh, one of their hands up, and they shoot uh, like an arcane blast thing, soul arrow, whatever it is. It's slow moving, and if you uh, get behind the um, the sunflower. Sunflower um, pillar thing, then it will um, it'll take the blast. Yeah, I've almost got them, and I really, really, really yeah. See, there's that um, soul arrow thing. Slow moving, but it can actually do a lot of damage and it can stagger you. That's the explosion I was talking about. This boss got me a lot of headaches. I, was, I just felt bad not being able to beat this thing. Um, yeah, so there'll always be five. Um, my advice for in the beginning is just rush the first one and then uh, try to kill it. But then, you know, another one will pop up. And this is why <laughs> I almost shit my pants. I was like, no, I don't want to get down and die here. Yeah, see that one is attacking me because I think it just got arisen as after um, after I killed that one guy. He vigorously healing. He really wants to kill me, clobber me. I really should have killed my uh, blood echo living failure. Probably has one HP left or something. But I'm I'm gonna end up not getting my blood echoes back after this. That's really sad. That really sucks. That's true. And yeah, that's pretty much.